morning students we are discussing on railway and airport engineering uh, we have uh, discussed about uh, railway components geometric design well uh, with today's lecture we will discuss about the railway tractions and the stresses that exert on the railway track so starting with the first topic railway traction what is the traction well uh, the source to which the locomotive drives power is called as the traction well uh, that power can be generated or can be applied uh, by steam by diesel and uh, electric electricity according to that the tractions uh, is being classified as a steam traction diesel traction and electric traction well this tractive effort or the tractive force is the term used for propulsive forces developed by the locomotives while the train consists of two units the locomotive that we call as the engine which provides power for the propulsion and the trailing unit which uh, consists of the passengers or uh, compartment or the goods wagon okay well until recent years the steam has been a universal source uh, for the uh, energy of the traction in the railways well in a steam locomotives steam is being generated by firing the coal after the diesel locomotives well this diesel locomotives utilizing fuel oils and these are uh, now replacing steam locomotives on the indian railways the electric traction has been in existence in india for the local trains in mumbai and uh, the suburban sections such as uh, uh, western railways and this diesel and electric locomotives are comparatively more efficient than the steam locomotives they are greater handling capacity uh, it permits better acceleration and declaration and those are capable of carrying the heavy loads at the higher speed well uh, this active resistances well there are number of forces which offer resistance to the movement of the train on the track while the tractive force generated by the locomotive should be adequate enough to overcome the tractive resistance and those the tractive resistance are resistance due to friction wave action wind gradients uh, the curvature and uh, resistance due to the starting and accelerating that particular thing so let's look forward for this uh, resistance due to the friction resistance to motion of a train running at a constant speed is offered by the friction between the internal parts of locomotives and the wagons as well as it between uh, the metal surface of rails and the wheels resistance due to friction is independent of speed it consists of general resistance uh, then internal resistance and rolling resistance while talking about this general resistance well uh, it is the friction of the locomotives wagons and the compartment itself it depends upon the lubricant used uh, then the type of bearing the atmospheric temperatures general friction for the roller bearings varies from 0.5 to 0.1 kg per ton and the another resistance that was the internal resistance this consists of resistance between the various moving parts of the locomotives and the wagons uh an example resistance between the cylinder and the rim of driving wheels it is called as the internal resistance <laughs> the talking about rolling resistance this occurs due to the rail wheel interaction on account of the movement of steel wheels on steel rails total friction resistance independent of the speed and can be obtained by the expression of r is equals to 0.0016 w where this r is the total frictional resistance independent of speed and w is the weight of the train in tons now the second one was resistance due to the wave action well when a train moves with the speed and a certain resistance develops due to the wave action of the train this is a uh, speed dependent resistance is because of irregularities 
and due to the vehicle movement of the wheels on the rails uh, sometimes on a railway track the locomotives moves in a zigzag manner that also leads to such kind of uh, resistance due to the wave action but there is no method for precise calculation of this resistance total resistance due to the wave action we obtain by r is equals to 0.0008 w into v here you can see this uh, coefficient is almost nearly equal to 0 we can say it is very uh, tough to identify and uh, it can be uh, negligible also so w is the weight of the train and v is the speed of the train another resistance that is due to the wind when a train moves with a speed a certain resistance develops against the movement of the train those are uh, side resistance head resistance tail resistance yes and its magnitude depends upon the size shape of the vehicle speed of the vehicle wind direction and the wind velocity also wind resistance depends on the angle at which the wind bridges the train as here is shown in this figure well here v is the speed of wind in kilometer per hour theta is the angle of wind uh, the direction of movement of train and this v cos theta is the horizontal component of the wind and this wind resistance also can be found out by rw is equals to 0.0000178 square it is also kind of negligible values next one that is the resistance due to the gradient Whenever a train has to move along a rising gradient, it requires the extra efforts or extra force in order to move against the gravity. Okay, and that can be found out uh, by Rg is equals to W into percentage of slope, that is the gradient that we have provided, divided by 100. Okay, the next that is the resistance due to curvature. Well, when a train negotiates a horizontal curve, extra efforts is required to overcome the resistance offered by the curvature of the track well, there are some of the values that have been recommended for the curve resistance that is for broad curve that is for broad gauge 0.0004 wd for meter gauge the value is 0.003 and for narrow gauge 0002 into w into d where this W is equal to weight of the train and D is the degree of the curve. The next that is the resistance due to starting and accelerating. Well, these resistance are experienced by a train at stations while starting and accelerating and uh, decelerating. Well, resistance due to the starting that is uh, for the locomotive, the value is 0.15 W1 and for the wagons, it is 0.005 W2. The total resistance that are uh, required at starting, that is total resistance at the starting of the train, that is 0.15 W1 plus 0.005 W2. Where this W1 is the weight of locomotive and W2 is the weight of wagon. Same way for resistance due to the acceleration, when you apply the acceleration or when you apply the brake or we can say the deceleration. At that moment, the RA resistance is 0.028 W into A, where again this W is the total weight of the train and A is the acceleration. Okay, so this was about the railway traction. Now the second uh, topic that we have to discuss is stresses in the railway tracks. While majorly stresses can be exerted in the rails, sleepers and the ballast. We are starting with the stresses in rails. Well, there are three types of stresses uh, that has been applied on the rails. That is uh, lateral stresses. Uh, the lateral force applied to the rail head produces a lateral deflection and the twist in the rail. Lateral force cause the rail to bend horizontally and the result and the resultant torque causes a huge twist in the rails as well as the bending of the head and the foot of the rails the second one that is the longitudinal stress due to the tractive effort of the locomotives and its braking force the longitudinal stresses are developed 
in the rail. While the temperature variation, particularly in the welded rails, results in thermal forces, which also lead to the development of the stresses. And next is the shear stress, the maximum contact shear stress at the contact point between the wheel and the rail is given by F is equals to 4.13 T by R raised to 1 by 2, where this F is the maximum shear stress, while R is the radius of the wheel, P is the static wheel load. Now the next that is the stresses in the sleepers. Well, based on the elastic theory, the maximum load on the rail seat is given by uh, P into S upon Z into L. Well, here the P is the wheel load as is the sleeper spacing. L is the characteristics length and Z is the modulus of rail section. The maximum load on the rail seat that is being 30 to 50 percent of the dynamic wheel loads depending on the various factor and the particularly the packing under the sleepers. Because of this loading, there are some conditions uh, arise because of the loading that is end bound sleeper and center bound sleepers. Next, that is the stresses in ballast. While the load passed onto the sleepers from the rail is in turn transferred to the ballast, the efficiency of this load transmission depends on depends not only on the elasticity of the sleepers but also on the size, shape and the depth of the ballast as well as the degree of compaction under the sleepers. While one professor in Talbot has analyzed the pressure distribution uh, in the ballast which has been shown in this figure. Uh, his investigation reveals that the pressure distribution curve under the sleeper would be shaped like bulb which has been shown in this figure. Here also you can see that uh, at the earlier stage, just bottom of uh, sleeper or at the initial stage of the or top edge of the ballast, there is a heavy load. And after that, gradually it get decreases and it releases the complete stress at the bottom of the ballast. Okay, so these are some of the stresses in the railway tracks. I hope you guys understand uh, this topic properly. Thank you so much students for your kind attention. Uh, I will see you in the next lecture with a new topic.